Good afternoon to you. Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It's Thursday, the 6th of October, 2022. And the big story here is going to be PTC number 13 on its way to becoming a tropical storm and eventually a hurricane and headed towards Central America. This is going to be very problematic for that area. They have been receiving the bad end of some tropical systems here over the last several years. And going back through history, uh, also, we think about Mitch back in 1998 and plenty of others. Uh, Matthew, the 2010 version of Matthew, crashed into Central America, never even made it to hurricane intensity, but it was very deadly because of that one very important impact, rain, and a lot of it. So let's see what we've got out there. And also at the end of today's update, I've got a nice surprise to share with you, something very exciting. All right, so looking at the Hurricane Center homepage, here's PTC 13. That just means potential tropical cyclone. It's not quite a depression yet, but it will be. It does look like, and eventually it will go on to become more than likely a hurricane as it heads in this direction towards Central America. Here's TD number 12. Never made it to tropical storm intensity. Conditions out here in this part of the Atlantic are just not favorable right now, and that's more typical of October. Uh, but they are favorable, and this is the area that we do watch this time of year right through here. So TD13, or PTC13 as it's technically called, fits that mold very nicely. Here's our depression way out here in the open Atlantic. No worries about that any longer. So let's focus in here on our potential tropical cyclone. The 2 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, that's the same thing as EDT right now. Uh, top winds are 35 miles per hour. It's got a pressure of about 10.05 millibars. And yes, there are hurricane watches in effect, or a singular watch for multiple places is a better way to put it. And I'll show you where that is. Here we can zoom in. Uh, that's why this is our interactive map, right? So here's where the hurricane watch would be in effect, right through here. Uh, these small islands well off the coast of Nicaragua. As this cruises across the southern Caribbean here, in the vicinity, the center, and all that mess I'll show you on satellite in a moment, still really bothering Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire. Uh, right now with some rain and squally conditions, and that's going to trek across the southern and southwestern Caribbean and then make landfall more than likely north of Bluefields, Nicaragua, which is right here. And, you know, it could come a little bit more to the north. You see the track bends off to the west-northwest more later. This is about 72 hours out or so. Um, so, yeah, more than likely right into Nicaragua, but if it starts to turn just a little sooner and heads more to the north, it could get closer to a landfall near Honduras, but you know what? Honestly, the coastal impacts, yes, they're going to be substantial, especially to the right or the east or the north in this case of where the center makes landfall, but this whole region is going to be in for a lot of rain, and as you can see from the map here, it's very mountainous through here, and that's going to cause a lot of problems. We've seen, like I said, opening today's discussion, rainfall has been lethal down this way, a lot of people live and work on the hillsides out in this region, and they live near the rivers, and the rivers can swell very quickly, especially if this isn't trucking through real fast. It could dump a lot of rainfall. So this is going to be more and more of a concern as we go forward. Another potential disaster in the making here in the Western Hemisphere. We saw it really bad in 2020 and uh, took the year off last year, thank goodness. I mean, October was pretty much nothing for the Atlantic Basin for the most part last year. And this is going to make up for that, unfortunately. Okay, looking at the satellite animation this afternoon, here's where our potential tropical cyclone exists right now. Really odd to see yet another system really hugging the coast down here. A lot of these low riders as of late, I won't say a lot, but they've been more frequent than I think we are used to seeing. Ian was pretty close to the northern coast of South America. That was more down in this neck of the woods. And then now here with this next system, uh, but, by the way, once it gets named, it will be Julia. That's the next name on the list. And if we go past Julia, the next name is Carl, in case you were wondering. Those, that's your answer. All right, so a close-up, true color, as we call it, almost like a visible satellite shot. I just, I really like this particular representation. Uh, definitely some favorable upper-level winds. And if it wasn't tangled up with South America down here, this would be well on its way to becoming a tropical storm. But again, it doesn't matter. It is bringing squally conditions to the ABC Islands down through here, and of course right along the coast of South America itself, the north coast of Venezuela there, and this is going to move off to the west and west-northwest. The more latitude it gains early, 
uh, the quicker it'll develop over here in the Southwest Caribbean Sea. Um, looking at the dashboard here from Tropical Tidbits, again, I love this. I really, I knew it was there all these years, but really started taking advantage of it more during Ian, and um, we're going to use it a lot more in the future. Lots of great stuff on here. Again, hats off to Dr. Cowan for coming up with such a great product. And here you can see clearly where the low-level center is located. That's very helpful there. And uh, some of the different track guidance. And this really is the most important to me because, again, it boils it all down. You remember during Ian, a lot of people watching the global models, the deterministic, what are each of those showing? GFS, Euro, CMC, Icon, uh, UK Met. I mean, it was just model mayhem for Ian, and for a lot of good reasons. There was a lot of spread with that. Luckily, in one regard, uh, the modeling is quite a bit less spread for this next system, especially early, a very tightly clustered envelope, as we call it. And then you can look in here and try to find the consensus that's kind of right down the middle, and it truly is, in this case, almost right down the middle of the envelope of other guidance. And that's basically right into Nicaragua here. But there is some spread here beyond the 72-hour time frame. And that makes sense because it's further out in time. So that would indicate more random processes involved that the spread starts to differ depending on the upper pattern up here to the north. Generally speaking, right now, there's a nice area, as I've been showing you, of high pressure generally outlined southwest oriented, I should say, southwest to northeast across the western Atlantic, southern Gulf of Mexico, and parts of the northern Caribbean, and that'll keep this system, what would be Julia, buried down to the south. Good news for the islands and the Gulf region to the north. Bad news, of course, for Central America. Unless these things stay out in the open ocean, they do affect somebody eventually, you know, once they make landfall, obviously. Uh, and even when they're out over the open ocean, they can cause problems to maritime interests. But I'm serious, this is really, I'm worried for people down here. I know what happens, I've seen it in the past, and that's going to be a really big issue here, going across a huge land mass. Several countries are going to be impacted by this. Another pretty nasty disaster coming up over the next several days. All right, the vorticity signature, this is helpful, especially when I get to show you the model guidance here from one of the deterministic models, the Euro. There is our vorticity signature. Nice and round, concentrated right there again, just off the coast and straddling the coast of South America. So does the modeling get it right? Yes, generally so. This is the ECMWF, the Euro from 12Z today. And again, this is what we call the deterministic run. It's not an ensemble. I mean, it's part of the ensembles, but this is just one run of one model. It's pretty good, though. It's got a pretty good handle on this, uh, and it's got a good initialization. There's the vorticity signature in the modeling and it looks pretty reasonable. I think we can all agree to that. So let's move it out, 24 hours. Um, now the Euro is pretty aggressive here. It gets this thing starting to really come together there. Finally in the Western Caribbean, Southwest Caribbean region, definitely getting its act together even more and then it becomes what very clearly looks like a hurricane in the model guidance here. We can switch it over to the, no, it's not available on this one. It's gotta be on the ECMWF. And this is going back to 6Z. Yep, these new ones that Levi has done where it has the three-hour increments, the higher resolution, or whatever you want to call it, that's not available yet, so that's fine. Um, oh, I do know what is available. We can look at the upper dynamics. And this guy, that'll tell us. So the pressure drops to about 983 there. I had to clearly squint there to see it. And what's troubling is it's deepening fairly quickly from the upper 990s, it looks like, mid-990s or so strengthening all the way to landfall. And this resolution here, the global model is not necessarily a hurricane model. <clears throat> this tells me that this will be strengthening on the way into Nicaragua. So not only are we going to have all that rain after this makes landfall, but this is also going to be potentially a strengthening hurricane at landfall, and that is troubling to see as well. Now certainly the good news for everybody north of it, there's that ridge sticking its nose or its thumb or whatever you want to call it right in there, keeping this thing buried down in Central America. But again, that's going to spell trouble. Uh, I know what's coming, unfortunately, for the folks down in that region. And then the Euro brings it across through Central America. Some of that energy, eventually, maybe part of it gets into the Eastern Pacific. But this whole area is just going to get drenched with a tremendous amount of rainfall. It's not until later, this is five days out, 
that you start to erode that ridge, but it's way far to the west. If that were to happen earlier and farther east, then it would turn more to the north. I don't see that happening. It's a little late in the game for this to happen for this system. In other words, it's pretty much destined, and even so, at day six and day seven, that ridge is still fairly potent down there. Now, it's interesting, the Euro at day seven does pop something in the western bay of Campeche, and yes, we will need to watch that to see what happens. But we'll worry about that a little bit later on, all right? Let's just get through the next three to five days or so uh, with what would be Julia as it comes into Central America. Now, before I reveal this next exciting thing, um, I have become friends with some of the people that fly the planes or fly on the planes. Um, I don't think I've become friends with an actual pilot yet, but that's okay. The flight meteorologist, um, several of them I have gotten to know over the years, and some of them have created a new website, a nonprofit organization and a website. I want to show it to you here. They've just debuted it today. And my friend Garrett from uh, out in Kansas Way uh, and some of his colleagues here, there's Garrett Black. Uh, he helped to start this with these other folks here. And these are the real live superheroes, in my opinion. Don't use that term lightly at all. You talk about risking your lives. Every once in a while, people will thank me and my team for what we do. Hey, you're risking your life to get us this data, to get us these cameras that we watch. Look, driving down there and driving back, are the two most dangerous parts where we are kind of risking our lives because it's the chaos of the highway system that worries me the most. These folks literally flying these airplanes, some of them which are very old and they have to turn around more often than we like because of mechanical problems, these are seriously our, our heroes. They are. They are going out there. And in fact, if it wasn't for them and Garrett was on one of those flights getting the data from Ian back to the National Hurricane Center and understanding that eye wall replacement cycle that it was completing and getting the data in that it, had, that it had strengthened almost to a cat five. Without that data, more people would have died along the southwest coast of Florida because the urgency in the messaging would not have been there. So they have done something to return, uh, you know, I mean, they've already done so much, but they're doing more and that is trying to raise money through this nonprofit. You can get a t-shirt. You can donate. This is the website. I'll put the link in the description of today's video. Please share this. Get the word out. Again, this is, this is from the real hurricane hunters that have put this together. Um, and you can read about it if you go to the website. All right. I'm going to get one myself and uh, probably some for my entire team. This is a wonderful thing. I'm glad they're doing this. Garrett asked me to get the word out. I'm glad to do so. Now I'm asking you to do the same. Share that across your social media and get a t-shirt. Have something, you know, Ian is a part of history. It is a negative part of history, but it's also a learning experience. It is something that we cannot deny. It happened, and it'll be something that we will remember, not in a very pleasant way. It's not like winning the Super Bowl, and you've got a commemorative t-shirt. This is something very near and dear to people's hearts as part of American hurricane history, and those t-shirts will be uh, something to kind of remember that by going forward that hopefully we can learn from mistakes made and build upon that and do better in the future. So congratulations to Garrett and his colleagues for getting this up and running. Um, hopefully it'll do very well. And that money, 100% of it, goes back to helping people in need from the people that help us. Uh, <clears throat> and they do it you know, as part of the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance. That's pretty awesome. I think you would agree. All right? All right, well, let me get this online for you, and we'll spread the word. Have a great rest of your Thursday. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I'm Mark Suttoth, Hurricane Track. I'll be back with you more tomorrow morning.